Hey, what's up, friends? This is Metro. Today, we're going to talk about how to win your lane in Deadlock every single time on every single character. And I'm not over-exaggerating here. There's a lot to laning that you probably don't know. We're going to go over the basics first, and then we're going to go more in depth about what makes you win the lane. First things first, the main thing that you need to do to win your lane is get a lot of last hits, get a lot of money. It is not killing the enemies. I see a lot of guys coming in from other shooters trying to just win the lane by killing the enemy. Killing the enemy is not the most efficient way to win the video game or at least winning your lane, right? Later on, you want to kill the enemy team. You killing a creep gives you roughly $72 or 72 souls as they're called in this game. And there's two parts to killing something. You get the last hit, which is the most important part. So when enemy creeps are about to be low, you hit them, right? You get the last hit and then a soul pops up and you want to secure that soul. If you don't secure them, the enemy can deny them, shoot them themselves and they get your money, which means there's roughly an 80 soul swing on every single deny, okay? Because you're losing the 40 souls that are floating up and the enemy is gaining the 40 souls that uh, come up. So what that means in practice is Every four denies is roughly a full kill on an enemy hero, okay? An enemy player, which most people don't seem to realize, right? A lot of guys I see, even in really high rank, try to go for kills over and over. I have lanes sometimes where I die a lot and I still end up with way more money than the opponent because I focus on hitting things first, last hitting things first. And there's a lot of things you can do to make that job easier for you. The way you want to play your lane is usually you want to be the one pushing the lane. There are exceptions, but what I mean with pushing the lane is, as you can see in the gameplay background footage right here, you start off aggressively by uh, lowering the enemy creeps' health, and then ideally, you want to go in for melee kills. Why do you want to go in for melee kills? They secure the full amount of souls instantly. There is no soul popping up, right? So if you go for a melee kill, there is no chance for the enemy to deny your creeps. So as long as it's safe, meleeing creeps is always better, no matter what you play, okay? First, you need to learn like when to go for melees, when it's safe to go for melees. Usually, what you can do is play behind cover and then pop out at the last second with a charged melee, right? You can use the charged melee to kind of direct your swings or when they're really low, the enemy creeps, you just go in for a quick melee and get the kills that way. In the example, you can see right here, I start off going really aggressive and I'm securing like three hits right away, right? And what happens is, I think we missed one creep there and I was in a dual lane with a random. So, you know, you can't control your teammates, obviously. But what happens when you push the lane and push aggressively is the enemy usually has to fall back, right? Because the creeps push into their lane. You secure your souls first and then you can just focus your entire attention on denying the enemy souls. And usually when the enemy has to fall back or they're fighting under the tower, it is way easier for you to get denies on enemy creeps. Why is that? Well, first and foremost, there's a uh, bullet uh, travel time in this game. So every bullet even if it feels like they hit instantly there is a travel time so the closer you are to creeps the easier it is to get the last hit right so when you push in and you get the enemy uh to their tower and you stand right behind your creeps and then you go for the last hits if your reaction time is fast enough you usually get the denies right that's the way to play it as you can see in the example here we clear the first wave and then i have the time or i'm looking to get the denies, right? As long as you don't die instantly, harassment doesn't really matter. You try to secure the souls um, and you try to hit the enemy souls as well, okay? That's the number one thing. So here is the next tip. There is one creep per lane, which is a healing creep. He has like a little staff coming out of his butthole and he heals you in bursts of healing over time. And you can tell if you're in the range of that healing creep by the little line that goes to you when you're close to them. What I usually try to do if I'm kind of low is play around your healing creep. So try to be in the radius of your healing creep while still uh, looking for last hits, right? That's the number one thing you want to do. Doesn't always work out, right? If the enemy is smart, they will also tr try to kill your, your creep fast, which is okay. It's not the biggest deal. Uh, wait for the next wave and just play safe. Which brings me to my next step. Aggressive gameplay overall tends to be better. If the enemy pushes you to your lane a lot, you will probably lose the lane because of what I just explained, right? If you have to sit behind your tower and try to get the last hits on the on the creeps that are pushing your tower, not only are you losing tower HP, and if your tower goes down, you lose all your defenses and the enemy gets a huge gold bonus, right? But also they will be able to deny the creeps way easier. Uh, next tip I can give you, sounds really simple, but play cover, right? Play behind cover, pop out, so you can shoot, shoot the enemy creeps or your creeps, don't stand in the open to where the enemy can just harass you. When should you go back? 
when should you buy? Is there a right and wrong time to go back and buy? And the answer is yes. And I see this still in my games and I'm not calling myself a good player. We're playing pretty high rating in this game, but I see a lot of players going back, buying at the wrong times or going in at the wrong times. After doing that initial push where you kill the enemy creep wave, you can fall back and buy. And ideally you want to pick the time when you know you can get back and still secure every single creep kill. And that's kind of hard to learn, but it is doable even if you go back to base. Let's say you get the final wave of, of the enemy creeps down, you kill them, you back out right away, go home, zip, buy, heal, come back. And if you do it correctly, what should happen is there's gonna be four enemy creeps right about to attack your tower because you pushed, you know. Let's go, go into more advanced things, I guess. Harassing is not bad in general, right? Putting pressure on the enemy is not bad. If you can secure an enemy kill, it's worth. But again, keep in mind, four creeps is is more gold than the enemy kill that you get. I know it sounds silly, you know, the, the, the goal is about winning the game, getting kills. But if you kill an enemy and you go down for what, to 1 HP for it and you lose a bunch of creeps, right? What's going to happen is the enemy at the start of the game obviously respawns really fast and they're going to come back really fast. They come back with full HP, push you out, maybe even get a counter kill, in which case nothing you did, you know, in the last like fight mattered. Or they push you back and you miss even more creeps. I guess I'm just going to talk about my thought process in the moment so you understand what's going on. So as you realize here, I'm quite low. Okay, I'm really low. I'm actually almost one shot uh, potential. And if you're not really confident in your movement or you don't really know what every ability in the game does, right? It's really easy to die here, obviously. So why am I not going back here? Simple reason is I'm pretty confident. I know what the enemies do, right? They have an Infernus, which is not gonna kill me unless he's close range. And then they have a seven, right? Which the only scary abilities of the seven, uh, his one ability that shoots the ball of lightning forward and you can dodge that pretty easily, or he can stun you. And if you have enough stamina up, you can usually get out of range. As you see, I stayed with 50 HP at one point and now we got a kill on both of them, right? We got the kill and the first player is already way back. Now I hit the sleep dot here. So he's already really low again. So this is just utter domination on the lane, right? But notice how even when he's low, but the number one thing I focus on, even if he's low, is getting the last hits to the creeps. And that's the one thing most players don't do, especially if you come from a shooter background. If you play something like League or Dota, you probably understand, but I think in this game, even more so than League and Dota, kills are not worth it early on. So now here, I'm back to 60 HP, kind of trolled a bit. I don't remember if I live this. I actually do. <laughs> 3 HP, now obviously that was kind of a coin flip, right? If you want to play safer or again, you're not as confident, you can always go back. But notice how I still stay. 100 HP and I still stay, still get the last hits, still get the denies. Now we already have bullet uh, lifesteal, right? So I'm, I'm healing a bit back. So um, I'm focusing on hitting the creeps more with my bullets. So I get more HP back, but I stay around my healing creep when I have to and try to get uh, HP that way. Another good part about actually staying in lane kind of low, to be honest, especially on lower rank, is that the enemy tends to like re get really uh, greedy for kills, right? They, they, like they see you low, they want to dive. And if you're a skillful player, you can actually use that to your advantage. You can bait the enemy to use more abilities on you. Um, and this is the point where I... <laughs> so what happened there is even there, I would have lived. I could have lived. The reason I died is because I jumped up on the zip line. And when you jump up on the zip line or you're on the zip line and they hit you, you get stunned and you take bonus damage. So that was a misplay by me, right? It wasn't a mega stomp, but we're up a lot of money, even though I just died. I'm on 4.8k uh, souls. My teammate Paradox is on 4.3 and the enemy is on 3.6 and 4.1. In a lane that is actually not that good for us, right? Haze is actually still a pretty weak uh, lane character. Like Haze excels later in the game, but in the lane, Haze is considered kind of weak. Speeding right back, going for the last hits, going for the creeps. Yeah, just try to control the lane that way. Again, always going for the melees if I can. And notice how even, like, I'm not sure that the enemy is hitting, but I'm still trying to go for the melees. And uh, pro tip, or well, not pro tip, a pretty obvious step. You can also melee the souls. So if you're reloading right there, what I did is I meleeed an enemy soul to get a deny. If you're close enough, you can melee souls as well. You need to aim for them though. Like you need to be kind of aiming at them. More general tips. If you become a bit more advanced or even in lower rank, always keep your eye out on the minimap. I know that sounds really, really simple, but uh, you know, this is first and foremost a MOBA, even though it has a lot of influences of games like Overwatch. 
And right there, I did die because I did not realize that the Whiskers was, was there. And even when I realized it was there, I stayed in my lane. So try to keep your eye on the minimap if you have enough multitasking skills to know when to be actually aggressive and when you can play kind of passive. A lot of people ask me the question, uh, when, uh, when should you actually leave the lane? When is the lane won or lost? And usually the answer is, it's when the first tower goes down. And the reason for that is, even if you are the one taking down the enemy tower, right? Then you have to walk in further and then there's gonna be a walker there. And in the early game, it's kind of risky, right? So you wanna start rotating or start farming other lanes after you get the first tower down. For the simple reason that if you don't wanna fall behind, it's gonna be way safer for the enemy. Assuming you kill their first tower, and you keep on pushing in, right? You keep on playing aggressive, you have the lead now, and you keep on pushing into the tier two tower. What often happens is they're just gonna sit at the tier two tower and you can't really last it anymore, right? Because there's a walker shooting you that does like five times the damage of the normal guardian or whatever the tier one tower is called. So yeah, um, in this case though, this is a pretty long laning phase. We're nine minutes in, both towers are still up. So there's really no reason for me to leave my lane Unless I see like an opening, I want to gank, uh, go rotate to another lane and get a kill there, right? But I felt pretty happy with how much money we were getting. And especially here, you can see the viscous is like, we're winning the lane so hard that the enemy is kind of forced to have a third person on the lane to try to win it. It's basically 3v2, which means they're actually losing other lanes, right? Because they're missing one player on another lane. Notice how I still, I play passive, they rush in, we get a sleep dart. I save my my paradox is like really really low and then a perfect swap into the tower one hp by paradox and their infernus dies and my paradox lives that was pretty insane uh a few items that can make your laning easier if i tend to get harassed a lot a lot i go for extra health regen first keep in mind extra health regen helps you twice because you because it also increases your max hp so don't think of 500 items like extra health regen as a as a waste if you are being harassed a lot and you're low HP and you're really trying to live, it is better to live and be on the lane and get your last hits than to die and be in base, right? So I see a lot of players that just follow a guide one-to-one -one, and a lot of the guides or a lot of the builds in the game are really good, don't get me wrong. Be a bit more adaptive to what you do. So what I made in this game, like I was really low at the start because we were gaining an advantage in money, right? I played very aggressive, but I took a lot of damage for it. So I traded my own health for money it's kind of like uh, if you do a, a drug trial in real life so i went for regen because i realized i was getting low and then i went usually i buy bullet lifesteal later but i realized i was gonna sit in the lane for a bit longer because we didn't really kill their tower and they didn't kill, really kill ours right so i knew the i realized the laning phase was a bit longer i decided to buy bullet lifesteal earlier to get more sustain in the lane and the funny thing is if you look at it now at 10 minutes in the game, yeah, we lost our tower, but we won the lane quite drastically. Both me and my Paradox have 8,000, and they're seven, and their Infernus are at 6,000, and that's a really significant lead after 10 minutes. Could have been even better, could have played better overall. They won the lane technically by killing the tower, but they didn't win, right? They traded, the like the Viscus had to rotate, and usually in games, when someone else like has to come to the lane to help, it's a waste for them, right? It's a win for your team. And the reason we're staying on this lane now, right? I said it's kind of unsafe. If you don't have the tower anymore, we're up in money, right? The Viscous is gone. So now uh, at 10 minutes and 55 seconds, we're sitting there. Viscous is back. You know, he, he really likes us apparently. But we're sitting there putting pressure on them. I don't know why we didn't get that kill. I could have dove for it. I don't know. He was one HP. I think my Paradox cleans him up here in a second. Yeah, got the, got the kill. So notice how we're so far ahead now that as soon as the Viscous is not there, we just roll. And this is over a 2,000 money difference, right? Money is everything in this game. Because money is not only money for items, it also gives you higher levels of your abilities. So you do more damage, right? Uh, neat little trick if you want to min-max, you can like um, slide back on the stairs to get uh, the infinite reload. So you have uh, more bullets and now we end up winning the lane really handedly. 9k now against 6k after we killed the tower. And notice as soon as we kill the tower, I start rotating start rotating away by my farming item which is tesla bullets and i think this game uh, i'm gonna end up like snowballing pretty hard uh, i'm not gonna lie to you i think we lost in the end i'm still trying to make haze work in uh, in late game it's quite tough because she's a glass cannon character she's really fun though so if you have any questions let me know in the comments uh, if you want more of those guides if you 
want any specific tips on anything else, let me know what. I am addicted to this game. I've been playing this game for like 10 hours straight today. It is so much fun. Can't wait to make more content for this. And until next time, see you friends. Bye-bye.